Don't throw that bottle away. Use it for something else. Like what? Like an interesting art project. Okay. So today we're gonna to use recyclables to um, make something else. Hey class, welcome back, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be going over another project. I'm doing like a summer PD series. Today's series piece is gonna be on trash castles. I'm still working on the name, but that's the project name that I'm going with. All right, so trash castles is really just where we're taking recyclables, things that we've thrown out, and we're gonna make something fresh out of it today. So get some recycle recyclable items, recyclables, cardboard tubes, different sizes. So collecting those recyclable elements, you're gonna add those pieces together to create different sculpture elements. So let's dive into this process. Now, first off, when you're starting to build these things, best mentality I've got for you is think of it as a funky version of Legos. So you're taking these pieces and you're gonna start gluing or using tape, I use tape, that was my thing, and start stacking these elements together. So what can we see just the bare elements of the structure out of at just adding a couple boxes together? Cheese ball container, a cold brew coffee from Starbucks bottle, get them at Walmart, orange juice bottle. So all plastic items are for my interior. You can use boxes, cardboard, anything that you guys want to use. These are just the things that I use. After doing that, then blocking the whole exterior out with any cardboard or paper product that has a sturdiness to it. So mat board, cardboard, construction paper, but like the really good thick construction paper. Add that to the outside so that way we have a surface to paint and add more pieces on uh, as we're making the project further down the road. Building these pieces up, we wanna experiment with texture. That's the key behind this project. I want you guys to experiment with texture and see what things work and how to add different elements together. For this piece, I was using a lot of different cardboard things to add to the exterior of the piece. So after I took mat board to build the outside of the piece, I knew that I needed to build something off of the, the siding of the roof, the cupola, the eaves, the awnings that are gonna be, that I wanted to build on the piece. I had to come up with different things that I could use to construct this with. So starting off with um, the outside texture there, I wanted to get that nice flat surface. I use a, a myriad of different mat board pieces that I had from previous projects so just recycle them. Uh, added hot glue. Hot glue became my best friend this last term uh, at school this year just because while I was working on these projects I started realizing the the benefits of hot glue and and that's I, I don't know I just don't use the stuff and but now I'm like I want to build more stuff like this. Uh, I will be making more videos like this over the summer. Why? Because I thought this was a really fun project and I get bored easily and I want to make some stuff and that's why and I'm going to use it next year and do some like mini, mini like crazy movie things. So uh, future projects, These, this was coming. Um, once I had the outside edges built up again, I'm just using cardboard pieces that are mat board pieces that I have from prior projects where uh, the Pagoda house, if you watch that video, I'm, I basically just shredded the house and used that to build this house. And I'm using for the eaves that are coming off of the side here, I'm just using parts of the, the roof of the Pagoda and I just, scissored it up and added the pieces on using cardboard that i've cut out to make doors using paper tubes from the coil animal project i'm cutting those pieces up to add those to the exterior as well then for the stone texture because i want this like stone rock element to give it more of a manor scape i took a drink holder from mcdonald's or checkers or burger king yeah it was a fast food joint i know that much and it wasn't chick-fil-a because chick-fil-a gives these um full holders for their for their drinks so i needed just a cardboard one so find some place that has cheap fast food it's not decent chest find, find yeah mcdonald's because we know you got to eat so something like that find that shredding that pieces up uh gluing that onto the onto the exterior there to give it that rock shape and give it the, uh, again you're doing you're tearing these things organically as you possibly can and as you're adding them on there it gives it that rock um natural built facade then using uh, cardboard strips, I just took other pieces of cardboard strips and chopped those, finally chopped those up to create the, the paneling for the side of the, 
manor house that we that we have here so had to build miniature frames out of it for the windows and to do siding elements just having to make those pieces ahead of time uh, for the windows because i wanted them to have a little more depth to them i did use two layers of the cardboard pieces together so that gives it that little more rise over the piece uh for the for the roof elements let's go into that for a second all i did was after i built a basic structure of uh, where the roof is going to be because once you have that bottle top i didn't have a cap from the bottle uh i just took extra pieces of mat board to build somewhat of a frame out of it uh just cutting strips out of it and just trying to build kind of a faux pyramid-esque thing starting at the bottom building up to the top we started at the bottom now we're working to the top adding those pieces in over and over and then overlapping them together gives it that nice kind of thatched roof style so you get that nice stair stepping element to the roof i'll find a proper term for that and put it in the then the the hardest thing honestly was trying to come up with a solution for the side element the 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 rapunzel tower that got kind of attached to the back there i had those diamond pieces from an, from the other project the geometric pattern project that i that i did taking those pieces and, and adding the geometric builds in there i did want to create that design on the exterior of the rapunzel tower there for that i needed to after I added those pieces in, I realized I have to go back and I have to retape up all the little sections just to give it some continuity. So where everything is, is going to be touching. Nice thing about masking tape, you can spray paint it just the same as the mat board and it works just as well. So I'm not going to add any more um, paper elements to the top on top of it just because I don't need to. It's sufficient as it is. Um, future projects I'm going to be working on, I'm coming up with other solutions for things because I'm finding the way that I did things worked, but it can always be improved upon. And I'm going to work on that for future pieces. I took the tower, uh, added the tower sections together. We took the whole thing over to paint and, and paint, spray painted the whole thing, a nice simple black. I uh, used an ultra flat black spray paint just to give it a base coat of paint so i had uh because when i saw it initially i was like i am definitely doing something from the nightmare before christmas why because i love that movie i think it's a beautiful design i think it's a it's a wonderful movie it's a good it's totally good and then wanted to add paint on top of that so it took a little bit of silver paint to add to one side uh mainly to give it initially when i did that it was because i wanted to do like some moon reflection some like a moonlight reflection get some cascading elements and then uh after i painted it i was like that's that's not what happened at all that didn't work out going into paint i knew that the siding itself i want to have a rich brown but i want to give it a little more of a pop element to it so i took a some white and added it to this brown metallic glitter paint that i have i've got this assortment it was from the prior teacher they left behind an assortment of different um acrylic paint so i used the it's a brown with with uh, gold flecks in it little gold glitter laid that down on top of, of all the of all the paneling pieces that way they give it a nice pop there's a little bit of glitter finish it picks up the light a lot easier so if i'm having to structure lights around it it'll it'll pick, pick up and reflect the light better for the roof elements that was all done in a bronze copper paint so painted that up and then started working on the stonework the stonework there i'm using more of a slate blue to uh to paint on it why because when i start putting lights on something and having to film it from a certain angle and then when i go to color process it afterwards because all of this footage is processed i don't just cut it and be done with it i color grade everything i have little flecks in my beard that i want to polish out so you know i take the extra step that and i make it look good uh so knowing that i'm going to change the colors a lot that blue color is going to be a lot more uh moody in tone when i put lights on it and do color grading to it later on so i definitely want to go ahead and add that thought process in to the paint element as i'm building it because i don't want to do it and then when i start working on it and realize the entire shot is thrown off because it's not the colors that i want it to be later on down the road these are the things that you have to do think about ahead of time especially if you're doing filming on stuff so if you guys want to elevate your uh art class stuff and take it to another level and do uh, like little plays, do set design, do all that kind of stuff. You have to think about every aspect of life that this piece is gonna go through. It helps you as an artist prolong what you're gonna do. Uh, it just makes for a better project, uh, I, to my two cents. Uh, I did notice that when I painted this initially, especially in the windows, uh, doing that, I was trying to do like a, like a creamy yellow. So taking a yellow, adding some white to it, lighten up the tint a little bit more with that white. It was too um, 
neon room and I needed to bring it down a touch. So the next day I came back with a little bit of orange, painted some orange on top of the windows just to deaden the, the light of it a little bit more so it looks a little more um, moody-esque. Uh, for future pieces, I will be cutting out the windows and then putting a light underneath it so I can actually light from the inside and use tissue paper, cardstock, or a white white copy paper, and then use a little bit of uh, a, like a stain, like a watercolor. Use a watercolor to dictate what colors I want my windows to be. Uh, or you, and you can also do shadow effects that way. And it's just a real quick, easy cheat that I like to do to make little fun fun things out of how to light the way the light is distorted so once all that stuff is done you get to the the final piece here and it and you know for the first time doing it it's not bad i'm not happy with it 100 percent as most artists are with their work we find little things to nitpick on but overall it's not bad wrapping up here you know it's a nice big piece if you guys have the time and the number of glue sticks i will tell you now i went through almost like a bag of glue sticks putting all this stuff on here so if you do this as a project, you're gonna need a lot. Again, I'm new to glue sticks, so that was just my experience with it. Hopefully I get some tips down in the comments for, from other art teachers like, you You didn't use the glue stick right. I would like to know that because I don't know too much about glue sticks enough to be masterful at it, but I, I, I'm just trying. I'm just trying, that's all I'm doing, I'm trying. Uh, but again, this was a fun project. I hope you guys got something out of today's class. Just always trying to create new stuff and make us learn a little bit more each day. Uh, as always, let's go ahead and wrap up class. Like we always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many people as we possibly can. Educate the masses. Want to get everybody learned and educated. It's always a good thing. Uh, let's not forget to, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern to, during today's class today, raise the hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys. Time to go build. I, all right, so this is gonna be like a bigger project. I wanna do like a faux Nightmare Before Christmas theme myself. I wanna make this like, a new, like an intro thing where I have all these little mini houses and it's like really like creepy scary. If you've ever seen Christine McConnell, I wanna do something like that. I like her a lot. She makes phenomenal stuff. If you haven't, if you don't know who she is and you haven't seen the special on Netflix, watch it come back and see me and uh and you like that's like my mentality that's what i like when i make artwork that's the kind of stuff i want to see i want to do why because it's it's funky it's creepy it's cool i'm big i like I, it's so beautiful beautiful stuff love that stuff oh chef's kiss other than that i will see you guys next class so until then later guys i'm gonna go make some more stuff i don't know what i'm gonna make yet but it's gonna be cool